Hi crafty friend, it's Justine. Today I'm going to make one card on camera and show you four more at the end. And this is all with the Flower Market Collection from Spellbinders. Today I'm going to do one here on camera with the Blossoming Flowers layered stencil. And then I'm also going to show you some more and those will include the one that is called Corn Flowers. So I just figured I should do it with you on camera just in case you're not familiar with how stencils work or you just want to see how I do it. So hello, here I am. <laughs> so I have not purchased any kind of stencil tool for my paper at all. I will probably be doing that soon, either the Ulta New product or maybe even... Um, I forgot the other company but there's another one that does it so I don't know I love Ulta New so I was thinking that that was the one I probably will end up getting but for now I will just use my best ever craft tape and it works for me so part of me is wondering you know why spend the extra money but I've heard that it is fabulous so I don't know I probably will be swayed to buy it anyway I'm just gonna put some of that tape on the edge just enough for it to catch and this will not affect my stencil at all. So the flowers that I'm working with today is a four part stencil. This is number one, then number two, number three, and number four. So each stencil has four corner marks on the edges. You can kind of see it's a little 90 degree angle. And on the top left, they have the numbers for the order for putting it all together. So I'm gonna start with number one here. Get some more craft tape and just jump right in. I had a little bit of fun working with different color combinations with my Distress Oxides in these stencils on my other cards. So I'm looking forward to showing you my color combinations. And I am fairly certain that I recorded with my phone, at least I took pictures of what inks went with what card. So that information will be in the description, although my phone is totally dead dead right now and it is not able to be seen. So I can't tell you right now on camera the color combinations from those other cards, but it will be in the description. All right, so for this one, for the big flowers, I was thinking about going with the light blue, which is the salty ocean and just kind of putting that all over the flower areas. My blending brushes are nothing fancy. These are from Amazon, so there's that, but other companies have some really nice ones. I think the Spellbinders ones are comparable to these. I think the Simon Says Stamp ones are comparable to these, so um, I don't know. I think you could spend money on other things if you're looking for some blending brushes. Just some blending brushes would be fine. I also saw them at Dollar Tree, so there you have it. I feel like in this economy we can't um, <laughs> waste our money, so there you have it. Okay, these flowers are already looking super bright and I did want to kind of mute them down just a little bit with the faded jeans color because this is going to end up being a sympathy card, which if you watched my last video, I think it was, no, the last one I did was Crafty Krita. Um, Anyway, I used the stamp of the month from Spellbinders to make some sympathy cards because I thought the sentiment was perfect for that. So I'm just gonna lean into the sympathy cards because I feel like everyone needs a sympathy card all the time. It's unfortunate, but that's just the way that life is sometimes. So I'm almost done with stencil number one and just getting that blue kind of on my flowers. I think I'm gonna wait and use my faded jeans color on the edges. So we'll get to that on stencil number four. Okay, so just to take this off, I just use my nail. If you don't have longer nails, you could use your tool-in-one, the shovel part, and ta-da, look at that. That looks wonderful. And I'm gonna reuse this tape, so I'm just gonna stick it here on my desk so I can use it on my next 
stencil. For cleanup, I'll show you at the end. This is so easy to clean, so don't worry about that. All right, then I'm gonna use number two and just place it where it belongs and you don't have to worry about it being upside down or anything as long as you have that number in the left hand corner you are good as gold okay then I'll just line up the corners again and tape it down I know that you can use magnets or other things I think that this tape really is a pretty quick and easy way to do this but you know, I might try something else in the future. We'll see. Okay, I'm going to go with Twisted Citron next. I don't think I have too much ink on there. No, it's fine. I'm not really particular about blending brushes and having ink from the last project on there. It's just whatever to me. But <laughs> I suppose if you are completely concerned, you could buy enough blending brushes to have one for each of your colors or you can just wash them in between with water distress oxides clean with just water so that's an option for you okay so for this I'm going to just cover this all with twisted citron and then before I take the stencil off I'm going to use the lucky clover to add shading to my leaves and I did practice this on another card before I did this video. So I'm eyeballing it here off camera and hoping to recreate that. <laughs> Although I'm not certain if this was the color combination that I used before since my phone is dead. So just keeping it real for you. We'll just, we'll just see. And you know what? If it's a different outcome, then it's, I guess, something to learn from. <laughs> okay. So that all the leaves are now covered with this Twisted Citron. So to kind of bring the depth, I'm gonna just switch to my other green brush. And before I just kind of go crazy here, I am gonna use, I have a little rag that I keep in my craft room and I'm just gonna take some of the excess ink off of the stencil. It's dry, the rag, and Hopefully that will help get some uh, Lucky Clover magic happening here. All right, let's try it out, see what happens. So I am using these little ones because the details are small. Spellbinders does sell these really nice little ones. There's This is the medium actually of the small. And then, so there's large, medium, and small, and I, like a true crafter have been hoarding these two and not using them which is pretty stupid so I probably should use those soon but I am just like that maybe you can relate so I'm just gonna put you know what what the heck let's just try it today you know what let's just try it today I'm gonna go in with that second to smallest brush and add my shading on my leaves here Oop, that one got a little dark it's okay. And I just kind of start from the bottom of the leaf and just kind of flick up like that. And I'll just repeat the process for that all the way on all of the leaves. Oh, I'm so glad I'm using this because now I feel like I can use it on other projects and um, some sensed stencils are coming to <laughs> Spellbinders in the future. If you haven't heard, I am fairly certain by now I can speak about it. Um, there's a stencil club going to come out starting soon so that will be fun and I will need my blending brushes all ready to go for the stencil club so that's lovely although now that I'm using this I really do like it and I probably need some more little brushes so who knows maybe these will go for sale around Christmas and I can pick some more up but I love how little it is it's definitely easy to get the ink exactly where I want it And 
I hope everyone is doing well. Let's see, when is this video coming out? It's coming out on the 19th. So yes, I can talk about the stencil club. So this right before Thanksgiving, I just turned 30, yahoo! And I guess that was a fun update for my life. <laughs> I definitely feel like an old soul though, so I don't know. I'm thrilled to be turning 30. I think that aging is a privilege and a lot of people don't make it to 30 for whatever reason and I am happy that I am here kicking it at 30 and happy to be crafting with you so yay <laughs> I know there's a lot of November babies out there so if you're a November baby you you get me <laughs> but having my birthday so close to Thanksgiving always reminds me that I should be extra thankful for life alrighty let's take this stencil off I just I love peeling and revealing the stencils it's just so satisfying oh that looks so cool okay I love it sometimes I wish I had a camera <laughs> pointed at my face to get my reaction because I feel like it is fun to see but I usually am filming in um house clothes if you will and let's just say the outfit combinations aren't aren't matching we'll just say that a lot of pattern on pattern here but you know what that's okay with me because I'm comfortable and I am crafting <laughs> maybe you can relate I mean I'm not wearing pajamas if you do wear pajamas you know whatever that's your prerogative I know a lot of people wear pajamas all day long if especially if you work from home but I do feel like I, I need to get dressed for the day because it helps me be a little more productive, but let's just say my outfits aren't cute, <laughs> so it's probably better that this is not filming my face. Who knows? Maybe when I finally finish our new craft room, I will film more with <laughs> the camera pointing at my face. Never say never. I've learned that the hard way. So... I don't know. Someone said that I should do like 30 lessons I've learned in 30 years. And I'm just thinking to myself, who the heck am I to like tell people any lessons I've learned? Because I feel like a babe still. I don't know. I, <laughs> I feel like I have a lot to learn still about life. But I don't know. I guess I'll just keep on learning and just I'm grateful for what I do have and excited to be alive. I don't know. Hope that's not coming off corny, but it's just my reality. <laughs> so let's see. Let's talk about my birthday, um, what I did to celebrate because it was pretty fun. So I am a teacher at a school, and like most schools, we have a lot of fundraisers. So we have a bingo fundraiser that happens a couple times a year and it just happened to fall on my birthday so I took my dad well, I guess they took me my dad and my husband <laughs> to bingo I told you I feel like an old soul on my 30th birthday we went to bingo it was the cash bingo so there's that and afterwards we're we went to a restaurant so that was really fun my mom was out of town but otherwise it's usually us for we are a tiny family, but I mean, I have a huge extended family. My husband's family is even bigger <laughs> and it's just, it's just fun. I love our, I love our families. Anyway, like I said before, this little brush has been really helpful and yeah, I think I'm going to need to buy more, which is unfortunate because I just put an order in to Spellbind. <laughs> two days ago and uh, forgot about them but you know life hack for anything like that if you're looking to buy something like these if for me let's use me as an example so if I know that I need some more of these I just usually go onto the spellbinders website log into my account and add them to my cart they don't leave the cart usually so then the next time when I'm thinking, okay, I can afford to do an order right now. Let's see what I can, you know, get what I need. And then I think to myself, what do I need? I don't know. 
well, it's in my cart. Or you can add it to your wish list. So now you know that. Okay, let's take off this one, stencil number three. This whole time I've been able to reuse the tape because the ink is not on the edges. Oh my goodness, I just looked down. Doesn't that look so cool? I do like these stencils. Okay, all right, we'll set that off to the side and do number four. This is turning out just lovely and I'm digging it. Okay, so now I have to decide as I tape, am I gonna go with the faded jeans color or am I gonna pull in the shaded lilac? Because I feel like both would look really pretty. I just don't know which one. Ugh. I think I'm going to do faded jeans because let's make a darker one. I don't know. We're going for it. <laughs> I definitely prefer these little stencils over like a one sheet stencil for ink blending and everything. I think these little ones just fit so much nicer on my work surface opposed to um, there was a big one that came out for the sunflower autumn serenade one and it was just too big in my opinion and it just kind of took over so I'm I'm glad that there's these little ones they just work better for me okay I know that there's a lot of salty ocean on here so I'm just gonna kind of do a little rub on this <laughs> rag I do have a lot of these in my craft room and they work so well for cleaning and whatever I know that some people are all about um, like wet wipes or all about the Swedish disc cloths I do like those by the way but these microfiber rags are just so easy to clean that I don't know they just they just work for me so anyway oh the Swedish dish cloths you can buy on the Spellbinders website now I just put mine in my kitchen because I do like using them in my kitchen. <laughs> All right, I think this is gonna turn out really cute. And especially when I put bling on the center of these flowers. Because at first I kind of thought, well, why didn't they leave the center so you can make the center yellow or like a, a limey green yellow or something like an actual flower. But then when I tried out the stencil, I thought, perfect I can add a bling in the center and then it looks like a real flower so that actually turned out better than my own head thought it would okay so with four inks here is the big reveal ta-da Ooh, that is cool now I'm looking at it and I see that I probably didn't line up my last one perfectly not a problem <laughs> my brain kind of has to go with the the mentality of um it's not perfect but it is what i made and i'm just gonna go with it so i'm just going to take this off for a second i will kind of let that ink dry i mean it's not gonna dry dry but it'll set just a little bit and then i'm gonna clean up my stencils so i'm gonna really set that away because i don't want any water to splash on it but here we go. I am a clumsy, clumsy crafter. So I do not do well with having water too much by my projects and such. So I am a spray bottle lady for crafting. <laughs> I'll show you what I mean here. You know, just to keep my projects kind of covered and such, I'm just gonna put this over here. It's my planner. I don't mind if that gets wet on the front. So anyway, I don't like open water um, for swimming or for crafting. So I like to use a spray bottle because I know that if I knock this over, it's not going to be a tsunami in my craft room. So for cleaning these, I could take them over to a sink, just run them under some water and be all set. But since I am still in my temporary craft space, I have no sink and look at how easy that was to clean that maybe took I don't know 10 seconds just spray it down really good that oxide comes up right away and 
there you go all clean some of the oxide colors are a little darker so they might need a little rub but I mean that's pretty good now there's a lot of water on here so I'm just gonna kind of rub this one and I think it's gonna come clean with just the water that's on the top cloth here yep all set and now that's ready to make another card. How fun is that? Oh, I think this is just a fun, fun little thing that I've tried out now. I was actually pretty nervous about stencils because of me not being like the most careful crafter and not having it line up like it just did now. But I think that's kind of the beauty of it. And I kind of find that with foiling too. You know, not every time is going to be perfect, but you just kind of have to try it out and see what works, see what doesn't work, play around with the paper kind, the kind of paper, play around with the type of ink, and just kind of play around, and things start to happen. All right. I think since this is a sympathy, you are in my thoughts, I think I would like a black background or a back border. So I'm just going to grab some black paper. I have this cut down to an A2 size already, but so is this. So just to get my border going, I will take my paper cutter and just snip a little bit. Now, I was fortunate enough to be sent this Spellbinders paper trimmer. It is super nice. I do love it. I've heard that it is the same as the Stampin' Up! one, so if you're familiar with that, you know. But what I really like is this clear part locks in, so it doesn't slide around as much, and I really do like that. The only thing that I switched with this was I switched the blade and the scoring placement. The score was on top, but now that I've used it a little bit, I think that I prefer it the way that it came to me and having the cutting blade on top and having the score on the bottom because I definitely cut way more than I score. So having that all up in the top was just kind of too much. So. Spellbinders knew better than I did, but you know, I had to try it for myself, and I think that's just a personality trait that I have. Now, I'm not sure if this will be a, what, what size this is going to be, because I am cutting just a little bit. I want to keep the design as much as possible on the card and not cut off any of that, so I'm just taking a little slice on each side. And we'll see if that gets us down. It's probably going to be just a tiny black border, but it will be just fine for me. Hmm, I think I can cut just a little more on that side. Let's try that again. This is a really nice trimmer. I definitely like it. Okay. Ah. Come back, you. Okay. Let's see how much of a black border it's really going to show. Probably not much. If I can hold it. <laughs> yeah, just a little, but that's okay. Sometimes having a skinny border for matting is kind of fun. I have a little fluff there on my paper here. Okay. Well, let's just go ahead and get this attached and then we're going to bling it up and not too much because it's a symp sympathy card, but you know, enough to make the flowers look extra pretty and that'll be it. And then I can show you the rest of them. Okay. That was like crisis averted. That could have stuck to my mat. There we go. Oh, I do have um, a Facebook group that I run called the Spellbinders Maker Group. Someone just asked, how do you put your borders on? It really just takes practice. I will just say that it <laughs> takes practice, 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 practice some more. It, 
it's not impossible, but when you are working with different pieces, you're going to want to just layer it up with, you know, a clean edge, having it semi-straight. But, you know, when you're working with handmade cards, it's not always going to be perfect. So I will just say, if you want that straight border, you got to practice for it. It's kind of like um, <laughs> when I used to teach third and fourth grade math, I used to have this one dear student and <laughs> she would say, I'm terrible at math. I don't know my math facts. And, you know, and I tried to encourage her and, you know, now she is totally fine with math, but it was a journey. And I would always tell her like, you know, when you were born, you didn't, you weren't born running around and skipping and jumping rope, all of those things you had to learn. So just like that with math, there's skills that you have to learn and you have to work at it. And, you know, when you start walking, you're going to fall on your face. You're going to fall on your rear. <laughs> it just, it happens. And in crafting, you're going to make things crooked. You're going to glue things on the wrong way or upside down or whatever it might be. But you just have to keep trying. And that is that. So <laughs> I'm not going to put on bling just yet because I want to put my sentiment on just in case it the bling might interfere with my sentiments. No, nope, actually it will be just fine. So if you're wondering and you don't know where this sentiment came from or what it's about, this is the clear stamp and die for November, the best month of the year. <laughs> and it is all about sentiments and it's a really good one. So if you wanted to pick this one up, I will have it linked in the description. For you, there's also a really great glimmer of the month sentiment set that's called All You Need Sentiments. It is a really nice glimmer set. So if you're looking for glimmer sentiments, it's one of those where you glimmer once, cut once, and I really like the way it is. And I think it has something for all occasions, which is exactly what you need when you're trying to... Um, be a smart buyer and not just buy things to buy it, but buy things with purpose. And I think that, again, in the world that we're living in right now, I think smart buying is the way to go and to not buy things that you might just use once if you're trying to save on a little moolah. Okay, I think we're going to use pearls on this one. These are the Spellbinders pearls. They're called Oyster, and they are self-adhesive, so I don't even need my glue bottle, which is even more wonderful. So, to put these on, I am just using my tool-in one. I'm going to put the, this size on on the bigger flowers, and then on the smaller ones, I'll go down a size just to kind of make it look like it's to scale. I have not filmed in a little bit. It's been a couple days, so it definitely feels good to be back on my YouTube here and just getting my my video done for today, and it's so fun to interact with you all, so if you'd like to show me what you make with this stencil or show me what else you make with the other Spellbinders products, I'd love to see it on my Spellbinders maker group. I really enjoy that so definitely join that I hope that it is linked in the comments I am pretty sure anyway the last one I messed up the adhesive so I had to use my glue bottle but okay sarah sarah alrighty this video is going to be interrupted real quick before I show you the rest of these cards because I if you're watching this, you might be a stencil person, and I just got to work with a new stencil from Spellbinders. I'm so excited. Look how cute this card is. It's so pretty, isn't it? I just love the stencil. I love doing ombre on it. I did that same card with a ombre stencil a little while ago, but here is the stencil. It's a one-stepper, which is awesome. The detail on this is unbelievable. And I just had such a fun time making this really pink girly card. And then if you notice here, this is the wax seal for this month and it's called Bloomy For You. 
So we have the blooms and the for you. So there's that. And of course I used my die cut of my twine on the back. And then these adorable flowers were from the Merry and Bright release that went with that adorable Christmas tree and the bow. So I just had those on my desk all pink and ready and I just popped them right on this card and love it. So yeah, I'm a stencil gal now. Anyway, back to the rest of the cards. Let's show you the rest of them. It has been wonderful to craft with you today. So if you've liked the video or learned something or just enjoyed being here, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe for more videos. This one is one of my favorites. It is pink, pink, pink. And I used a really neat glimmer sentiment that was from Simon Hurley on this one. And this is my inspiration for my leaf color. <laughs> my leaves leaf color leaves color ah the color inspiration for my leaves on this one so there's that again I will have all of the distress oxides linked or at least listed down below for each card so if you wanted to recreate that you could this one I was hoping for a neutral color card but it ended up being very very teal so <laughs> that was fine with me but you know it just went in a different direction and then the sentiment that i have here on the bottom is from that glimmer sentiment of the month that has a little bit of everything i just realized this tape was here i'm sorry <laughs> can you even see this i don't even know post-it notes notes everywhere okay and then of course i had to do a purple card because i love purple <laughs> thanks for my mom for making me love purple but this one was, again, similar leaf color from the other two. And I used the another sentiment from that same Glimmer sentiment set. And with my last card, I did a two-tone flower, pink and a purple, and did another sentiment from that same Glimmer set. So I definitely like that one. <laughs> just saying. The Glimmer ones, cut ones, are just so good and... There's that. I showed these four to a friend before I filmed, and I think this was my least favorite one that I made, and it ended up being her favorite one. So, you know, there's something for everybody. I definitely recommend trying out your ink colors and just playing around with it. Try to go into your craft room and find something that you haven't used in a while. And for me, on this project it was these embellishments because I have not used those pearls in a while but they ended up being a really perfect finishing touch for this card so I love the way it turned out so for this card I just need a back on it or a card base and I'll be all set to send this off to someone who needs a little pick-me-up anyway let me know your favorite in the comments was it the um, blue one that I made on camera today, neutral tones, two-tone pink and purple, all purple, pink. Let me know in the comments and I'll see you in my next video. And ooh, I'm going to plug my next video because it's kind of a different one. It's kind of a fun one. I asked you if you would be interested in a watercolor pencil video, like a how-to with these watercolor pencils from Tim Holtz and you said yes you said yes so I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do that next it's on my to-do list and I I hope that I can inspire somebody with my watercoloring it's not perfect but it's what I do so come on back tomorrow not tomorrow Saturday for that video you almost have to wait a week so sorry, but you know, I have over 500 videos on my channel, so something is bound to keep you entertained as you wait for Saturday. <laughs> anyway, happy Thanksgiving. I hope everyone has a decent day. If you're working retail or um, volunteering on that day, um, I'm with you and I totally support you. And if you are going through um, a hard holiday. Know that you're in my thoughts and prayers. I know that the holidays are not always a happy time for everyone. So, um, yeah. Anyway, um, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Happy Thanksgiving. And that's that. We'll see you next time. Bye, crafty friend.